So again, we're going to go through 16.4 very, very quickly. All of this, again, is calculator stuff. So if you are not comfortable with the calculator, you certainly need to pay attention right here. Okay, if you're good with the calculator, you know what you're doing, then most of this you're probably going to be able to do very, very quickly. Uh, so we're going to take the first problem, and we're going to go through this, explore very fast. Uh, basically, all we're doing here, we have done two different types of regression equations now. We've done linear regressions. We have done exponential regressions. Sometimes one model fits information better than the other. Sometimes one is a benefit to you more greatly over a period of time than another one is. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to compare these and look and see what happens. So the first one here, they tell us that we are getting a raise. And it says find the monthly salaries based on a $100 raise per month or 10% raise. You choose. One might be better than the other. You're trying to figure out what that is. And then it says, what if the raise were 8%, 6%, or 4%? Well, if you're doing a percent, obviously, which raise are you going to pick? The one that is the biggest. Exactly. So you want to choose the 10% raise. So those are easy to compare. But when you're talking about getting $100 per month or a 10% raise per month, those are two different things. So then you've got to compare them differently. So how do you do that? Well, since it's a raise, you're increasing your base amount by 0.1. Everybody good? So my exponential function here for that one would be y equals 1,000 because that's what I started out with times 1.1 to the x power. Whereas here, if I'm getting $100 per month, what's that $100 represent? My, what's the word per? I told you to always associate that with. Okay, but in terms of a linear, that is, somebody said it, slope, slope. So this equation should be y equals 100x plus your y-intercept, or your starting value, which in this case was what? 1,000. So everybody go on your calculator. For y1, I want you to type in a $100 per month equation. 100x plus 1,000. For y2, I want you to type in the exponential function. 1,000 times 1.1 to the x power. Next, you want to go to second window, your table set. You want to start at zero. Your delta table is going up by ones. You want to have them both on auto. Then do second graph to go to your window. Now we can plug these values in. So here, this one's pretty easy. If you're getting $100 a month, then in month two, I'm going to make how much? $1,200. In month three, I'm going to make $1,300. That one's easy. The exponential's slightly different. What's your salary after two months for the exponential? 1,000 what? 1,210. 1, After three months, it's? 1,331. 31. Okay. So comparing those two, which one should you pick? Would you rather get $100 per month or a 10% raise per month? 10% raise. Now, it's not drastically different, but scroll on your calculator down to 10 months. How much are you making with the linear? 2000. 2000. How much are you making with exponential? Almost $2,600. Big difference now, yes? So, why does an exponential grow more quickly? Because it's a 
raise on a raise kind of thing. It's a percentage increase based on the previous amount. Well, as the previous amount grows, then your next amount's going to grow even more. We called it earlier in the year like compound error. When you round and you keep rounding and keep rounding and keep rounding, it creates a greater error. Well, the same is true here for any kind of exponential function. When something grows, as it grows exponentially, it grows faster and faster and faster, more so than the linear. So again, if it's a 10% increase, that means your salary is increasing by 10% every month, 8% every month, whatever your percent is. When it's a flat increase rate, okay, a linear rate, increase by $100, well, for month one, it's a 10% increase. Now, why is that the case? Because my salary after month one was $1,100. My original salary was $1,000. So the difference in that was $100. 100 divided by the original salary, 1,000 is 0 0.10, which is 10%. However, that's not going to be the case the second time. My original salary was 1100 and now I have 1200 which was an increase of $100, divided by the original salary, which was $1,100. So divide 100 by 1,100 on your calculator and tell me what you get. Oh, 09 repeating, right? So really, what is that? That's approximately a 9% increase, 9.1% increase. Then what would happen? Well, the next time then, it's still a $100 increase, but now that's based on a starting salary that was $1,200. So what's 100 divided by 1,200? Point oh eight three repeating. So now we're at 8.3%. So what's happening to my percent increase in my salary? It's gradually going down. down. Why? Because it's a flat rate increase. It's not a percentage increase. It's $100. We, go, we want to go right to comparing a linear versus an, versus an exponential. Now, what we are going to do is, in this case, we are doing a $100 raise every month and a 1% raise every month based on a starting salary of $1,000. So, on your calculator, go to Y1 equals and we're going to do the linear, 100x plus 1,000. And then go to y2, and we're going to do that as an exponential, 1,000 times 1.01 to the x. Now, Graphically, this is what they've gotten on their calculators. Now, how in the world did that happen? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to think about a window to be able to view this. So let's think logically. X here is talking about months. So if I go to my window, what do I want my X min to be? Zero. Zero. Can't have a negative number of months. What do I want my X max to be? I have no clue. I have no clue because I have no idea where this intersection occurs. So here's how I'm going to walk you through how you determine this on a calculator. Let's just start with X max as 100 and do your X scale by tens. 
Do your why men? What's the minimum amount of money you can make? For this problem, it's one thousand dollars. So make make your why men a thousand. Now again, I have no idea where this occurs. I don't know what that Y max is. No clue. So let's just make something up. Let's go ten thousand dollars. So we do Y max at ten thousand. And do our Y scale by tens. Now push graph. Can you see where the two functions intersect on the calculator? No. You should not be able to see that, okay? You shouldn't be able to see it. What that tells me is my window was not big enough to see that intersection, okay? It's not big enough to see that intersection. So you have one of two options here. You can either Go back to your window and increase those values until you keep seeing it, or do this, okay? Press the zoom button at the top. One of those should say zoom out. I don't remember what number it is. Number three, okay? Select that one. It should take you back to your graph screen, but what you have to do is you have to press enter to make it zoom out. So press enter once. Now can you see where they intersect? Not yet, right? So go back to zoom. Select number three, zoom out. Press enter again. Now can you see where they intersect? Yes. Okay. So once you see where they intersect, now we can find the point of intersection by going to second, trace, calculate, which is, what is it, number five intersection? Select that, and then you press enter how many times? Three, Three times. And then the intersection point you get should be the same as this one right here. 363.96 and the Y 37,396. Yes. Logically, right here, what does this represent? Okay. So, very easily, the linear function here is greater than the exponential up until what? 363, at which point their value should be what? The same, equal, exactly. They intersect. So if I'm going to work for this company less than 363 months, what is the best option for my raise? Taking $100 every month, the linear function. You follow me? If I'm going to be with this company longer than 363 months, then which raise should I take? I should take the 1% raise every month because after this point, which function grows more quickly? The exponential function. And another way to compare them is not just graphically, but you could look at the table of values here. The problem with the table of values is if I'm scrolling down the table, it's going to look like the linear is greater all the time until I get to 363 and 364. Well, who's going to scroll down that far? <laughs> You're not going to scroll down that far. What? That's why you want to find the point of intersection where? On the graph. Are you going to see it immediately on a graph? Probably not, which is why we had to zoom out or change our window to fit it. The last thing in this lesson, and we're not going to go through all this, the last thing in this lesson I want to point out is how do you determine whether you should use a linear regression or an exponential regression? And this is very, very easy, and we've already done this. For it to be a linear regression, a line of best fit, 
then the common difference should be what? A number that is the same. It should always be going up by the same amount or going down by the same amount. So if you look at the difference in the values here, is this a common difference that is the same? It's not, okay? If the first one decreased by about 5,000, the next decrease should be by about how much? 5,000 if it's linear. So if it's not, then that means you should use an exponential. And this is all 16.3 was. I would put all of these values in my list, L1, L2. I would go to my stat, go over to calculate, scroll down to number 10 or 0, which says exponential regression, and that's the one I would pick to come up with a exponential equation, this, that fits that data up here. So now we're right back to lesson 16.3. So the other examples, this one, this one's an increasing because why? The values are all growing. Is this a linear? The answer would be no, it's not a linear because if it's linear, what should be true about these numbers? They should be very, very close. They should be going up by the same amount every time. Instead, the values that they increase by are actually growing. So again, what would be the best fit? And exponential, exponential regression, not a linear regression. So here's the year turn problem. Look again. Here's the difference. Exponential or linear? Should be exponential again. If it were linear, if the increase here was eight and a half, then all of these numbers should be close to what? Eight and a half. Linear is the same increase every time. Okay? The difference here is growing, therefore an exponential is the best fit. All this factor is, is taking the current difference value and dividing it by the previous one. Well, since these stay the same, that is what is known as our common ratio, or our what value? What's another name for our common ratio? Or variable, what variable is it? Mm, it is our B. If B is greater than 1, what's the function doing? It's growing. it's growing. So if this is our common ratio, then what should be happening here? They are increasing. They're increasing. It's just not a linear increase. It's an exponential increase.